This is a group of campaign furniture that many officers in the second half of the 19th century in the British Army would have had. They had the option to buy a number of these items as a group set from a lot of the London dealers and of course you'd get a special price for buying a group of items or they could buy them individually. So let's just go through some of the items that would be in a group set and let's show you an illustration first of all of such a set which was sold by J.W. Allen of The Strand in London, very well known campaign furniture and luggage makers. So in that illustration, we saw an iron camp bed, very similar to this one. We saw a campaign chest, and it was inside a pattern case like this one. And when you set up, the pattern case would become a secondary piece of furniture. You would have a shelf which would stand in front of the chest when packed up. You could open the doors and inside the shelf goes and you've got lots and lots of storage in there. In the illustration, there's also a washstand, essential of course. There's a Duro chair with a pattern case. Now we don't have one of those, but we do have an Albert chair that uh, J.W. Allen made. And this all folds up. The difference with the Duro chair was that it had leather arm straps, worked on an X-frame basis, and the pattern case had legs which you could fit to it to make it into a table. So those are the basic items that you could buy as a kit, uh, a group price for all of them. But like I said, you could also buy separate individual items. So let's see what else we've got here. Well, we've got a folding table by Drew, very useful size. We've got a set of campaign shelves, which typically would sit on top of a campaign chest and be very useful. Now, this is a bit of a throwback to an earlier time. This is a naval chair. It all folds up. But of course, they weren't sold just to the Navy. It's very likely that the odd army officer used them. And perhaps our officer in his, uh, his tent or his barracks here uh, inherited one from an earlier family member. So that's quite a nice naval chair. Campaign mirror. It's got uh, a magnifying glass for shaving and a standard glass. And it can also be set up to three stands. You fold it back on itself and the one side makes a foot for the other. He's got his cutthroat razor here. A bone shaving brush which packs down a toothbrush. These will all go into a dressing case. Down here we've got a bidet. Now not, uh, not every officer would have had one of these but certainly some took them and we have um, found a number of folding bidets either with legs remove, removable or like this with legs which fold underneath the travel. Campaign bookcase. Um, very useful. No TV of course in those days or YouTube so um, a good supply of books to uh, while away your downtime, uh, help educate yourself, get a little bit of culture uh, while you step off a battlefield would be very useful. A writing slope, very important uh, if you need to write home uh, send the letters home, fill out any orders, a writing slope would be very useful. A decanter box with four decanters in, brass bound for travel, fantastic, very useful, you can put your spirits in there, warm you. A pair of barrack straps for hanging your uniform or uh, perhaps a sword. A watercolour of the officer's uh, wife and daughter to remind him of home. And of course, hanging on our tent pole here, we've got a tent pole strap, which would be very useful. Now these also came with a long hook, so you could hang a lantern off it. All great kit. And perhaps we should uh, 
take the camera off a tripod and just have a little bit of a closer zoom in before we pack it all up and show you how compact this large group of portable furniture can become for travel. So this is a campaign chest that we looked at right at the beginning. It's a fairly standard mahogany two-part campaign chest with removable feet. And here's a pattern case for it. And if we go in a little bit closer on the pattern case, we can see that it's also in two parts. You've got mahogany showwood to the front and uh, painted pine or deal to the top and sides with iron handles and iron cladding to give it a little bit of protection. To the front, there would have been a board which fitted just to cover and protect the show wood. This is the iron bed. And that comprehensively breaks down for travel. Now, originally it would have had a painted pine packing case. Unfortunately, this one doesn't have one. Uh, we have had them in the past and that would contain all of that for travel. Onto the washstand, let's move round to the front of it. So here we've got a mahogany washstand. Uh, it's all wood. A lot of them at this sort of date would have had brass standards, much like those on the shelves here, and they would operate in the same way with finials at the top, and you would unscrew the brass standard, standards and it would break down. This one has got wooden standards or pillars, and you turn the washstand upside down, unscrew the legs, remove the shelf, then the next uh, group of pillars and so on until it's dismantled into pillars or standards and boards. On the top here, we've got a little travel shaving brush. This packs down within the body of the handle. You've got his cutthroat razor, of course, toothbrush, little pewter tin. Here's our campaign mirror. Magnifying glass to the bottom for shaving and a standard glass to the top. And there's our tent pole strap. Onto the naval chair. As I said, uh, our officer perhaps inherited this from uh, a father or grandfather who was in the Navy. This folds up nice and easily, much earlier in date than the rest of the items. But, you know, you used what you had and a good chair is a good chair no matter its age. So on our dining table here, well, a good glass of red wine to lift your spirits in the evening after a hard day out in the field. We've got one half of a Brighton Bun candlestick with the other in the corner there on our little table uh, by our bed. On the table also, you've got a writing slope and a decanter box. And here the officer's also got his food. He's got uh, his, um, his cutlery and his plate and bowl, which would all pack down into a case. A little leather covered work box and some food there to give him some sustenance. This is the Albert chair, a design by J.W. Allen. And this also all folds down for travel. And as I said, at the end of the video, we'll show you all of the items packed down so you can see how small they do actually go. Our campaign shelves, very useful, break down in the same way as a washstand as discussed. Straight on view of our packing cases. And on top of it, we've got a campaign bookcase. Now that'll fold down into a box. We can see the hinges in the middle um, and you could have a good library of books in there just to entertain you while you're away from home. Finally, some leather barrack straps. Very useful. You can use them individually or as a pair for hanging uh, swords or guns or riding crops or uniforms and a watercolour of the officer's wife and daughter. 
So that's a good set of examples of an officer's kit that he would use from the second half of the 19th century. Let's pack it all down and show you what it looks like ready for travel. So here we can see everything that was in the officer's room packed up ready for travel. So let's go through a few of the bits just to explain what they are. Well, the main bits of furniture are the campaign chest and the packing cases. And here we can see the packing cases, one on top of the other, set squeef, and inside you have got the chest. Now we're not going to be able to see the drawers of the chest because the shelves of the packing case, I don't know if you can see that, are set in front just to protect them and to tidy them up during travel. We've got the officer's dining table here folded up. We've got the bed all broken down. Now originally, as I said at the beginning, this would have been in a painted pine ironclad box, probably would have had the officer's name on it, and maybe it also would have had the maker's name. A number of different makers made this sort of bed, from Hill and Millard to Allen, and a lot of the other London makers. Um, a Hanford leather trunk, useful to put uh, a lot of your bits and bobs in, your uniform, your clothing, but also um, other things. Boxes such as this decanter and the writing slope that we purposely left out would probably be packed inside cases like this. Down here we've got the table which was in the corner. Colonial table the officer picked up on his travel somewhere, broken down, the two legs off from the top, bolts on. His rolled up carpet, nice to get out of bed onto a little bit of a warm carpet, uh, especially in a cold climate. The bookcase, which was on top of the pattern cases. The Albert chair, folded up nice and neatly. The washstand, broken down into its different components. And again, probably would have had a pattern case. And quite often these washstands would fit into a tub, which would be a hip bath or a foot bath. And then the top of, uh, of that, which would be used to turn it into a pattern case more often than not would have a pillar base that would screw to it from the underside and that would form another table. Once you put a cloth on top of it, the painted top of a packing case lid uh, is not recognisable, well, is not seen. Our bookcase here, which we've already mentioned as well, going around in circles. So there you go, everything very neatly packed down for an officer to put on the back of a wagon and move off to wherever he's fighting or stationed next.